Okay, there's a word in the title of this video that I can't say because YouTube's gonna get all nervous and stuff. So, what do you think would be the best alternative? Um, weenus walled? Stiffy stumper? How about peen preventer? Or D denier? Let's see how that one works. What's the worst or best D denier you've ever given, gotten, or witnessed? Story one. Last semester, a friend who we'll call David and I were at a huge party out of town, and the party just got shut down by the cops. No big deal. We just go to the next party down the street. Skip ahead to the end of the night, and we're both pretty drunk at this point. Now, David is with Abby, who is completely down to take him home with her, and being the nice guy that I am, I try and keep her completely sober roommate Jessica from ruining the night by talking to her. While the four of us walk back to their dorm, I try to make a conversation with the roommate, but all she's giving me are one-word answers and staring at her phone. We get to the edge of campus and David and Abby pause to make out for a bit and cue Jessica to begin the peen pausing. She proceeds to interrupt them by telling Abby she wants to go home and asks us where we plan on staying for the night. We tell her that we're not entirely sure and that Abby invited David back with her. Jessica doesn't seem to like this, however, and tells us that Abby's other roommate, Trisha, had apparently threw up on the floor and that Abby would be sleeping in Jessica's bed with her while Trisha stayed in the throw-up room alone. Better still, Jessica then points at the park bench nearby and tells us that we can sleep on those. Plenty of people do it all the time. Ignoring this gem of advice, David pulls Abby aside to talk slash make out some more as Jessica again pulls out her phone. Up to this point, Jessica is doing pretty well trying to phallus fumble David and Abby, but she wasn't done. For her final move, interrupting David and Abby, Jessica then shows us her phone, which she had looked up nearby hotels for us to stay at before essentially dragging Abby away, wishing us a good night. Best passion preventer I've ever witnessed. Too long didn't read? Sober roommate one? Everyone else zero. Gotta admit, this person was on point. You don't know if she's looking out for this girl, or if she's just being a jerk. I kinda think she's looking out for her. We don't know anything about Abby's state at this point. Was she really drunk? It kind of sounds like Abby was kind of out of control and Jessica was kind of being the level head. Story 2. College during my sophomore year. I drank far more and far heavier than I had any reason to. This obviously led to a fair amount of nights that I could not remember what I did. Well, one night during a party, I start talking to this chick. She seems really friendly and talkative with me, so I think things are going great. At one point in the night, she accidentally drops her phone in the toilet, so I quickly offer to dismantle it and let it air dry properly. None of this rice bowl doggy doo-doo here. She's super thankful. I'm on cloud nine, thinking for once I'm doing all the right moves and have a proper chance at things. That's when she exclaims, Oh, thank you so much, Maltalica. You're always so nice. And that's when it hits me that I don't know this girl's name, and yet somehow she knows mine and seems to be on a familiar basis with me. Biting the bullet, I just decide to ask how she knows me again and whether we had met before, and she just kind of laughs and explains. Apparently, over the past few weeks, she had been coming out to parties at my place, and we had met several times while I was thoroughly blacked out, and my blacked out self decides to be her best friend ever, even encouraging her to talk with some of my other friends. I had ruined my chances before I even knew I had them. Too long didn't read? Blacked out past self sent a flesh wand fumble to the future. There's the classic statement from the Pogo comic strip. We have met the enemy, and he is us. This is very painful to read. Apparently this guy just friend-zoned himself. But at least when he's blacked out drunk like this, he was giving his friends a chance. Too many people when they're drunk turn out to be jerks. This guy appears to be extremely altruistic for some reason. Story 3. A couple of years ago, my buddy and I were out at a bar having a great time. As closing time grew near, 
An older woman, hell-bent on taking a man home, approached me thinking I could be the one. In my inebriated state, I spoke with her for a bit. She perceived this as me being interested in her, and suddenly she asked if I'd like to go home with her. In a state of shock, I told her I was with him, to which she replied, Oh, I'm sure he can find a ride home. He had been listening the whole time and instantly jumped in with the most flamboyant voice I've ever heard. Oh no, honey, he's with me. I just went with it. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't clarify, but he's my lover. She had a look of shock on her face that I hadn't seen in ages and apologized profusely. Then he took it a step further. This is my man, and you know what? He makes me pancakes every Saturday. Do you know what I like with my pancakes? Penis. She bolted out of there like lightning had struck her. And I don't think we've laughed harder since that experience. I love that guy. I think this one goes under defense rather than blocking. We all want to hear great stories about a wingman helping his friend get into some action. You don't always hear many stories about the wingman helping them get out of a potentially bad situation. Here we are with one of them. It's great that they both had the foresight to play along. Story 4. So I was at this party and there was this really creepy guy that was hitting on every girl there. Dude was all greasy and nasty and just a generally creepy guy. So he's across the room and is motioning for my best friend's girlfriend to come over and talk to him. As my friend gets up to go punch him in the face, I stand up and run over to him. I feel kind of bad for him, but at the same time I was drunk enough to try and mess with him. My friend sat down once he saw that I had it handled. So when I got to the guy, I said, Hey bro, what's up? You waved me over here. He started freaking out. Oh my god, no, I swear, I was trying to get that hot blonde to come over. So I responded, Hey, man, if you get a little gay when you drink, that's really okay. Nobody's here to judge you. At this point, he starts to really convince me that he's trying to talk to a girl and not me. I still feel as if I hadn't messed with him enough, so I say, Look, bro, beans, if you're just trying to get your toy tool sucked on, let me know. I got you. I then walk back to my friends who couldn't believe what they had just heard, and they all laughed. The creep was then removed from the party by one of the fraternity guys who were putting the party on. Too long didn't read. Creep tried to hit on my friend. I hit on him instead. I'm a straight male. Story 5. Sophomore year, I lived in a separated double, two rooms with a connected door with my best friend. One fateful Saturday, he managed to bring this very beautiful freshman back to his room. I, on the other hand, had just gotten over a breakup and was on a bender of epic proportions. According to Will, my roommate, I got back to my room around 1 a.m., drunk off my butt, and started banging around in my room. He didn't want to freak out the girl he was with, so he told her not to worry about the noise, and they kept hooking up. A few minutes later, though, the door that separated us came crashing down, as I had apparently managed to destroy the bolt keeping it in place. What was even more remarkable, though, was that I had taken all of the drawers out of my dresser and set them up just behind the threshold of the door. I then yelled, Our doors are now drawers! Welcome to the future of efficiency! And passed out on the floor. Needless to say, Will's guest decided to book it, making me a hookup harasser. Edit. Thanks for the gold, stranger. I will let Will know that someone rewarded me for ruining his night. Story 6. I talked with these two awesome friend girls I've known for a while about a threesome. They had expressed interest in having another one and were discussing candidates for the male position. I was next to them at the bar and jokingly raised a Hunger Games salute and said, I volunteer as tribute. This got a good laugh and unexpectedly, they seemed kind of into it. I go to work after that. And then when I'm off, meet up with them and cruise around some bars in a big group. They are super spicy and flirty all night, lap-sitting, talking about spicy time, the whole deal. Well, one of their co-workers is in the army and about to leave on his second deployment. 
He's an all right guy, but is acting pretty superior and cocky all night. I can chalk that up to nerves on his part. I know I'd be a bundle of emotion if I was in his shoes. But this son of a shrew is monopolizing all the attention. Shots happen, everybody is feeling loose and flirty, and when the house lights come up and the bar is closing, we pile into a cab. At the very last moment, army guy jumps in our taxi. My plan had been to suggest we get a hotel room and some room service, champagne, and spark a joint. Army guy wants to go home, and he lives a bit away. During the cab ride, the conversation gets heavy and serious. Before long, the girls are emotional and crying. This kills the mood. We all get dropped off one by one, he and I being the last. Godzilla. I was expecting the army guy to get the threesome this guy was angling for. Did he even know about that part of the conversation? He had a pretty good angle on it if he did. He's going to be going away for a while, doesn't know when he's going to come back. It doesn't sound like he had any clue what was going on. He was probably just working through some nerves about being deployed. Story 7. I was 58 years old at the time. Went out with a 25-year-old girl, my neighbor from India, who was here getting her master's. I took her out to celebrate her completion prior to her leaving in a couple of weeks back to India. She tells me on the way home she wanted to have spicy time with a white guy before she went back. No one would know, and she felt I was safe and wouldn't become attached. Pulls a negligee partway out of a purse to show me she was serious. I get back to my place, and my 22-year-old son has dropped by with a friend to visit. Both are partially drunk, but not too drunk to pick up on what is happening. My son thinks it will be funny to hang around. Finally, she gets frustrated and leaves. My son thinks it's hilarious. Me? Not so much. I will get my payback, though, even though I won't be around to see it. His older brother has agreed that on his younger brother's 58th birthday, he'll take him out for drinks and hire a young paid play partner to hit on him, giving him the build-up that he's going to get lucky, then he gets presented with a card from the young lady that is going to say, Your dad wanted you to have this card. Hey, son, curse you. Only 38 years to go from now. His older brother can hardly wait. Story 8. I do not go to clubs, but my wife has dragged me along a few times on what really is a girl's night out, plus a neutered purse holder slash driver. It's terrible but I get handsomely rewarded the next day. Anyway, some of these clubs are really violation-friendly. I think that's another reason I'm dragged around. So when I'm out, there's always that girl in the corner getting harassed by that guy that isn't hearing the word no. Girl is always a bit too drunk to keep her resolve, and after enough drinks, just looks helpless, stuck and alone. It's super easy to hanky-panky harass. You just walk up to the girl, say, Hey, have you seen Karen? I can't find her. Can you check the bathroom for me? They get momentarily confused, but then they clear up and duck into the bathroom where I ask my wife to go and see if she's okay. Wife always explains what that was all about. I always get profusely and drunkenly thanked by the girl as my wife helps them find their friends and get death stares all night from the guys. This has happened like four or five times now. I'm not trying to be a hero. I'm just super bored and super sober. Scavengers are creepy, and it's funny. Story 9. Once when I worked at a bar, I got a guy to roofie himself. I worked at a bar, duh, and one night we were super busy. I noticed that on one side of the bar, there was a guy trying to chat up a bird, and she was clearly not interested. Nothing weird here. Lots of people suck at chatting up women. I would see this often. Anyway, guy calls me over and orders two beers, one for him and one for the lady. Anyway, as I turn, I noticed out of the corner of my eye him fumbling with something. I assumed he was taking something. Again, not uncommon to see. I watched him, though, and he dropped some kind of pill into the girl's drink. As he turned to tell her the drinks were up, I moved over and switched the glasses around. Later in the night, the bouncer told me about a guy he had to roll out the back door because he had passed out in the toilets, causing a line. After a few questions, it turned out to be the guy who unknowingly 
drugged himself. Oh, the sweet revenge. Good on this guy for turning the tables. Roofies are just beyond creepy. If you wouldn't want it happening to you, why in the world are you okay with making it happen to someone else? Story 10. Every year we have a parade with a carnival. Well, after the parade, there's a beer garden with our town's home brewer. Great beer. Well, I had just gotten back from Leavenworth, Washington for rock climbing, so I'm tan, in great shape, and look, I assume, decent looking. I was actually pretty satisfied with my outfit that day, so I take a smoke break and one of the servers comes up and hands me a beer. Here you go, dude. Someone bought you this. No kidding. I felt like a boss. Well, I'm standing there enjoying my spicy me beer and these two ladies walk up, probably in their late twenties, but damn good looking. We start chatting up and they ask what I'm doing afterwards. Oh, I have no plans. They ask if I would like to go have a fire pit with them. Hell yeah! Well, at that exact moment, up comes my mother. Oh, Allie, you look so nice today. Yes, this is my son. My mouth is hanging open at this moment. As she's talking, the two nice ladies get this disgusted look on their faces and walk away. I walk back to the table in shame, told my stepdad what happened. His jaw dropped and we all gave my mom hell after that. Still give her hell about that, actually. Story 11. Ooh, story time. I was in the Marines at a bikinis and martinis party down in Pacific Beach, California in 2009. I saw this smoking hot chick and started talking to her. Everything was great, but then my buddy started hitting on her. He was deploying soon, and this party was for him, so I backed off so he could have a chance. When the woman noticed the old switcheroo, she looked at me and said, Am I being manhood misdirected? I stared at her blankly for a second or two. It feels like I'm being manhood misdirected. I was getting to know you, and now you backed off for your buddy. I said, Um, yes. She said, Well, I don't want to get to know him. I want to get to know you. My buddy stormed off, and I said, Just a sec. I went and talked to him, came back to the hot chick, and said, I'm ready to get to know you now. We've been married for almost four years now, and it's been great. To think I could have missed out because I was trying to hook a friend up still gets me to this day. Too long didn't read? Woman called me out for her getting manhood misdirected. Story 12. Platonic friend of mine was visiting from out of state. I go with her and a mutual friend to a crowded bar. We're hanging back, waiting for some seats to open up, when some guy finally settles up his tab and takes off. Visiting friend takes the stool so we can finally get some orders in, and I notice the middle-aged dude sitting to her left is busy swiping right on Tinder. Dude is thirsty. He notices the Asian girl sitting to the right of him and straightens up his appearance a bit before he starts chatting her up. I can't hear what he's saying, but the body language and the look on his face are obvious. So I let things play out for a bit before I come up, casually put my arm around her and ask, Did you order our drinks yet, babe? He gets the message right quick and flashes a smile of resignation before he finishes his drink and bids us a good evening. First round was on her. She was grateful. That situation could have ended up really badly. This guy must be a real master at reading the room. The Asian girl seemed really thankful. I don't know if I could have been that perceptive if I was him. But then again, they hadn't ordered drinks yet, so his senses were in top condition at that point. Story 13. I was 17 and on vacation with my parents. They dragged me to a bunch of baseball games in Denver. It turned out that the stadium was built in the Gaberhood. At least, I saw rainbow flags everywhere. And as I was walking about 30 feet ahead of my mom, I saw this hot, hot guy who was probably in his early 20s. He started walking toward me, and our eyes locked, and it was one of those moments where electricity passes between you and the spicy energy is so intense that if a stranger got between you, they'd have an orgasm and burst into flames, and their ashes would serve as a legendary aphrodisiac sought after by desperate people everywhere. Then my mom ran up behind me and yelled, Did you pack enough underwear? The guy immediately changed directions. 
I know that even without her interference, there was likely no way I would have gotten my equipment wet that day. But still, damn, Mom. Story 14. Old buddy of mine was my ride when we decided to head out to a bar one night. We step up to the bar, and I notice a group of girls sitting at the corner of the bar. I grab my drink and head over to their group. It was four or five good-looking women. One was giggling with me and matching shots with me. He comes over and starts trying to be all smooth and flirtatious. They completely embarrass him and blow him off. He was a real cocky jerk, and they caught on right away. So me and my girl start dancing and really having a great time. He's sitting at the bar by himself and really ticked off. She heads to the bathroom, and he says he's leaving. He says he's going to the bathroom and heading home. So I go out to the truck thinking, oh well, lots of fish in the sea, end up passing out in the truck, and wake up two hours later when he gets back in the truck, still in the parking lot, by the way. Hey, that chick was asking about you, and we ended up dancing and drinking, and I got her number. Needless to say, I did not go anywhere else with him again. Story 15. Worst equipment evader I have ever heard of was done by none other than myself, sadly. I was driving home from work in upstate New York in the fall. It's late and dark, but it's the back road, so I'm going like 65 miles per hour. All of a sudden, a deer pops out not that far in front of me, and I slam on the brakes. She makes it out of my lane, so I let up on the brakes slightly. But apparently, I was so focused on her that I didn't realize the monster buck chasing that booty for a split second. Reapplied brakes to the max, and I swerved as I could, but damn it, I clipped his hind leg just barely. He stumbles off into the bushes, and I'm in oh hell mode, looking for my phone to see who I can call, because I don't have a gun in the car, and this deer is suffering. All I have is a pocket knife, and I really don't want to do that. Fortunately, within moments of me stopping, a sheriff just happened to be passing by. He came over, we talked, and he found and shot the buck in the bushes. Too long didn't read? Worst deer divider ever. Deer was looking for some late-night booty. I headed him off with my car, and the cop showed up to terminate him and his lineage with extreme prejudice. I'm kind of relieved it was just a deer. I mean, poor deer, but he was driving on the road. I thought he was going to hit some guy. I mean, we're talking about drunk people. There could have been some really desperate guy out there in the middle of the road. Again, it was the back road, so you never know. Story 16. Sophomore year in college, I was at a friend's party, and a girl I'd gone to high school with walked in with her friend. I'd had a small crush on this girl in high school and was feeling the liquid confidence in my brain, so I started talking with her about this and that. It led to us alone in the basement. Everyone else went upstairs to play a drinking game or something and showing each other our tattoos. One was on her left boob, and she, with a very flirty look in her eye, said, Hang on, let me show you the whole thing. She goes to unhook her bra when her friend yells from the top of the stairs that she's bored and wants to find a random party to crash. It was obvious that the girl was very drunk, and my new lady friend sighed heavily and said she had to go babysit her friend. That was the most last-minute coitus interruptus I have ever experienced. Story 17. A man came to a Halloween party of mine as Captain Happy Time Halter with his trusty sidekick, the Poonicorn. The captain had a black bodysuit that only showed his face and a shield with a peen and a no sign over it. The Poonicorn was dressed as a doctor with a massive red strap-on adult spicy toy on his head and a clipboard. The strap-on had a condom on it. Whenever anyone at the party looked like they might be vaguely close to getting laid, the captain made an entrance and the Poonicorn read STD statistics and symptoms from his clipboard. <laughs> Nobody got laid that night. <laughs> Oh my Godzilla, that's perfect. Talk about committing to a theme. That took research. That took internet research. And they were in on it together. I wonder if they got invited to any more parties. Maybe they would be there if they promised never to do anything like that again. Story 18. 
Towards the end of a party, my friend was walking to his car with a girl he was hitting on all night so they could drive to his place. Five feet from the car, some guy standing on the sidewalk having a smoke break who apparently drank way too much suddenly projectile vomited all over the girl. She's understandably upset and embarrassed about being covered in vomit and immediately loses all interest in a hookup and just wants to go home to shower and change. Her and her friend, who I was hitting on all night, leave together in the car. We never saw that guy or either of those girls again. To this day, we have no idea who that mysterious reverse Cupid was. Story 19. Way back, my brothers and friends went to Europe and took the trains around. We met some Southern Bell type girls from America while in Berlin at some beer garden. They asked us back to their room at a youth hostel. Everything was going great, was kissing, was fondling, was eek being met a beer wiener, and then creepy French guy, the guy who was in charge of the place, started banging on the door. He actually let himself in while the girl's top was off. No one spoke German, but the girls knew he spoke French, and they did only minimally, but it was enough for him to kick us boys out. We walked back to our hostel, bobbing up and down, with two weeks of Eurorail frustration pointing at our own fun-time fail faces. I thought I was going to score in Europe. Instead, I had to wait until the communal shower was unoccupied and send it sadly down the German sewer system. Too long didn't read? Met some southern girls in Berlin. Instead of sending my seed in utero to Georgia, it became part of the Baltic Sea. Story 20. Freshman year of college. I always wanted to climb this tree that I passed on the way to class. The lowest branch was always just out of reach. So one night, my friend invited me to a party in his dorm, and I happened to walk by that tree. I decided to try and see if I could reach the branch just for doo-doos and delight. I actually ended up succeeding in climbing into the tree. What I didn't realize was that my friend was trying to chat up this girl about 75 yards away. While I was in the tree... I think I woke up a squirrel who started angrily squirrel swearing at me and running around the branches. I fell out of the tree and the girl was actually facing the direction of the tree. She saw me fall and was like, hey, I think someone just fell out of that tree. She was too busy doting on me and my friend was like, freaking A, how did I know it was you? Too long didn't read? It was the squirrel's fault. Story 21. I'm not sure if this counts, but oh well. A friend and I were sitting down at a table in a bar, having a few drinks. Two girls came over and sat down on the other side of the table. So, naturally, my friend and I were keen to start a conversation. Suddenly, some guy walked over near the table and stood around for perhaps 20 seconds, looking at his phone before walking away. A horrible smell then descended upon us. The dude had walked over and unleashed a hell fart and just walked off. Everyone could smell it. It was the type of odor that's almost physically assaulting you. The two girls looked at us with an expression of horror and disdain before quickly getting up and hurrying off. We just sat there dumbfounded. Thinking back, I should have blamed my friend. Oh, and there's the male loyalty, friends. The reasoning is better one than none. Getting lucky, right? That is awful. Are they still friends? They might not be if he ever reads this. Story 22. New Year's Eve and we're all at a bar. The ball had dropped and now everyone was getting wasted. A friend was dancing with some girl on the dance floor. Typical bumping and grinding. They start making out and you can tell she's going to go home with him. My friend excuses himself to go to the bathroom. After he finishes, he strikes up a conversation with a different girl near the bathrooms. They talk for a minute and then start making out. He once again excuses himself to go back to the dance floor to get back with the first girl. Turns out, the two girls were there together and were best friends. Dude Phallus fumbled himself because he got too greedy. Story 23. My daughter got me pretty good. So I take my daughter to the bookstore to buy a new book. She's turning four at the time. And I meet this really cute blonde elementary teacher. I start a conversation with her. She's all googly-eyed over my very adorable daughter. It was great. 
Then, as I'm about to get her number, my daughter says, Okay, Daddy, enough talking to the cute girl. I want to go home. I chuckle and say, Just a minute, sweetie. We're about to leave. She looks at the girl, dead in the eye, who's now blushing, and says, Daddy picked his nose on the way here, grabs my hand, and marches me off. I'm just left speechless. Story 24. In high school, I was dating this awesome girl with a 10 out of 10 best friend. I didn't care for her friend much because she cheated on every guy she's ever been with. My best friend at the time caught word that I knew a single 10 out of 10, and he begged and begged me to hook him up. I kept telling him no because I didn't want him to get hurt by her. He didn't care, called me a horizontal mambo harasser, and kept begging. I finally gave in and introduced him. Sure enough, they got engaged, my friend got deployed over to Afghanistan, and she cheated on him. He damn near unalived himself. Can't say I didn't warn you, buddy. Story 25. My friend was going through a breakup, so I was looking after her. We went to trivia night with my normal two couples, and she subbed in for my significant other. A guy reeking of cologne and stale beer came over and crouched down by my friend and put his arm around her chair. I just had to come over here and tell you how beautiful you are. She looked uncomfortable and had been fighting back tears for several days. I put my leg on the rung of her chair and reached out and touched her leg. I butchered up a bit and said, Excuse me, but she's here with me. Oh? Pause. Oh, you like together? Yeah, we're together. Oh, sorry, man. I love that he called me man since I'm a girl. Story 26. I was at a bar with a female friend of mine. The bartender was flirting with me quite a bit, and I was flirting back with her. After a couple of beers, my friend and I were getting ready to go down the street to meet up with a few more friends. After we paid our tabs, but before I could get the bartender's number, my friend stands up and says as loudly as she can, All right, McRae 82, let's go so I can suck your stuff. Then she walks out. The entire bar. The bartender included stopped talking and just looked at her as she walked out, then looked at me, then back at her as she walked out. I was so completely stunned slash embarrassed. I couldn't even say anything. I just got up and walked out. Story 27. When I was a freshman in college, I was living in a one-bedroom apartment with my buddy, which meant we shared a bedroom with two beds. One night... I had gone to bed early and was awoken by my roommate saying he needed the bedroom to himself and his girlfriend for a little while. I got up reluctantly and said in half a daze, nobody ever pays me in gum, and walked out. About five minutes later, he comes out and says I can go back to sleep in my bed because what I had said made his girlfriend laugh too much and it killed the mood. My bad. Story 28. At a bar on Halloween, a girl my friend was talking to got distracted by this other guy while he was in the restroom. He was trying to pull some fast moves, so I started to move awkwardly close next to him. He turned and said, What the hell, man? I just started talking to him like I had no idea I was doing anything weird. Hey, man, cool costume. How's your night going? Sweet bar this place is. Girl turns away and goes to find my friend. As soon as she does, I just walk away from the other dude mid-sentence. Would have loved to have seen his face. Story 29. I work at a bar, and a couple of weeks ago, there was this guy and girl sitting at one of the only two tops in the bar. They were there for a solid four hours, all snuggly, had his arm around her, he bought all her drinks and food, and they were just kind of sitting there near the end of the night chatting. Some dude walks in like an hour before close, walks up to the table, talks to the girl for about a minute, and she gets up and leaves with him. Just leaves the other guy sitting there. It was brutal and also amazing. Story 30. Happened to me a few years ago. Was talking to this cute girl at a party all night. Got her number, took some shots, took some pictures together. Finally, on our way home, and she's sitting on my lap in the back seat, 
Reaching her hand up my shirt and stuff, guy in shotgun gets out and the driver goes, Hey, the girl, want to come sit up front? I can't really see at the back window when you're on his lap. Curse that guy. And then he ended up dropping her off somewhere else and saying I couldn't get out there. Story 31. When I was a senior in high school, there was this drop-dead gorgeous young woman sitting alone at the corner of the coffee shop we were at. My friends dared me to hit on her. We ended up hitting it off very well and appeared to be somewhat compatible. Right as I'm about to invite her elsewhere, my friend runs up to me, frazzles my hair and screams, He's a male paid spicy companion. It didn't make any sense, but it was awkward enough for the young woman to excuse herself. Story 32. There was a girl I was really into, and we both got pretty drunk at a party. She proceeds to ask me, I can't find my purse. It might be in your car. Do you want to go outside and help me look for it? My friend overheard and told her that her purse was right here and to come over and talk to her. I then overheard her friend tell her that she was drunk. She was, but not that bad, and that she would regret it. I never did hook up with her, but she could have been the love of my life. Story 33. One time I was visiting my sister at college when I was a junior in high school. She had a party at her apartment and everyone was pretty drunk and having a good time. I was hitting it off with this one girl when the girl comes up to me and says, Snakebite 4789, I broke my pants. Can you come help me fix them? I look down to see her unbuttoned pants when my sister runs over, screams, They aren't broken! Buttons them up and drags me away. Story 34. Was visiting my girlfriend over winter break from college a few years back. We are sitting on a large sofa in the living room with a blanket over us when she starts to play with my member. Out of nowhere, her little sister enters the room and jumps on top of us. Luckily, my girlfriend was able to hide my boner and the sister was none the wiser, but it killed everything. Story 35. Honestly, my daughter. Biggest direction of Vader in history. She sees a man come over. All of a sudden, it's... Mommy, I need a hug. Let me cuddle you. I must sleep with you tonight. I'm going to stay up until 4 a.m. She's three. She knows what she's doing. One time, my potential lover had to sleep on the couch. She made sure I never got any play that night. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.